Hi there, and welcome to the next lesson in this free Hyper-V training course for Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. In the last lesson, I gave you an overview on what Hyper-V is and how it works. In this lesson, I will start to create a Hyper-V infrastructure by demonstrating how to install the Hyper-V role. As soon as the role is installed, you can start to create virtual machines. Without further ado, I will now change over to my Windows Server 2012 R2 server to demonstrate how to install the Hyper-V role. What you are looking at is a clean installation of Windows Server 2012 R2 with no roles or features installed. Throughout this training series, this is the server which will become our Hyper-V host and will run our virtual machines. Before I demonstrate how to install the Hyper-V role, I would just like to point out a couple of configurations I have made. First, I will right-click on the Start button and open the System Properties. Notice that I have renamed this server to Hyper-1. Also note that I have joined this server to my Active Directory domain, techtipsfromwill.co.uk. I have done this because Hyper-V is most commonly used in organisations that utilise an Active Directory infrastructure. At this point, the only other configuration I'd like to point out to you is the networking configurations. If I close the System Properties screen and open the Network Connections screen, notice that there are three network adapters installed in this server named Ethernet, Ethernet2, and Hyper-1 LAN. The Hyper-1 LAN network adapter is the adapter I am using to connect this server, Hyper-1, to my Active Directory domain. If I open the properties of my Hyper-1 LAN network adapter, notice that I have assigned it a static IP address, which is common best practice for a server. I will now close the Properties screen for my Hyper-1 LAN network adapter and will return to the Network Connections screen. The other two network adapters, Ethernet and Ethernet2, have been newly installed and so far aren't doing anything. If I open the properties of my Ethernet network adapter, notice that this adapter is still set to receive its IP address automatically, which is the default configuration. The same configuration is true for Ethernet 2. Of course, one question you may have is why have I installed three network adapters? And the answer is simple. The Hyper-1 LAN adapter will be used to connect this server to the domain and nothing else. Throughout this training series, I will make no further changes to this adapter. However, the Ethernet and Ethernet 2 network adapters will be used in future lessons to provide network connectivity for my virtual machines. Of course, I could use just one network adapter to connect both the Hyper-1 server and all of my virtual servers to the network if I wanted to. However, having multiple computers share the same network adapter is not a sensible use of bandwidth and is best avoided. Don't worry if this sounds a little confusing at present. All you need to know right now is that I have three network adapters and one of those adapters is used to connect the Hyper-V host to the network and the other two will be used to connect the Hyper-V guests to the network. I will now close the Network Connections screen and demonstrate how to install the Hyper-V role. To install the Hyper-V role, first, open Server Manager from the lower left corner and select Manage from the top right corner. From the drop-down list, select Add Roles and Features. This will open the Add Roles and Features wizard. The first screen that opens is the Before You Begin page. From here, just click the Next button. On the Select Installation Type page, 
select the Role Based or Feature Based Installation radio button and then click the Next button. On the Select Destination Server page, select the Select a Server from the Server Pool radio button. Further down, in the Server Pool area, select the server you would like to install the Hyper-V role onto. In my case, I will select to install the role onto my hyper1.techtipsfromwill.co.uk server. When finished, click the Next button. On the Select Server Roles page, tick the checkbox to the left of the Hyper-V role. Notice that in order to install the Hyper-V role, I will also have to install some additional features, known as dependencies. I will accept the dependencies by clicking the Add Features button, and will then click the Next button. On the Select Features page, just click the Next button. The next page is the Hyper-V page. This screen simply gives you a brief overview of what Hyper-V is and how it works. The next page is the Create Virtual Switches page. This page gives you the option to create a virtual switch before you create your first virtual machine. A virtual switch, in a nutshell, allows a virtual machine to communicate with the other computers on your network. You can think of virtual switches as network adapters for virtual machines. Virtual switches are created from the physical network adapters you have installed in your Hyper-V host. As you can see, the three network adapters I showed you earlier, Ethernet, Ethernet2 and Hyper-1 LAN are all listed. To create a virtual switch, all you have to do is tick the checkbox to the left of the network adapter you'd like to create it from. To keep things very simple for now, I will choose not to create a virtual switch at this time. Don't worry, virtual switches can still be created later from within the Hyper-V console after the role has been installed. In later lessons, I will demonstrate how to do this. For now, it is far more important that you understand what a virtual switch is rather than how to create them. For now, I will simply click the Next button. The next screen is the Virtual Machine Migration page. From here, you are given the option to enable live migrations for the virtual machines on this server. To enable this feature, all you have to do is tick the Allow this server to send and receive live migrations of virtual machines checkbox. This is one of the more advanced features of Hyper-V. Live migrations essentially allow you to move a virtual machine from one Hyper-V host to another Hyper-V host without any downtime. In later lessons, I will demonstrate how to do this. For now, to keep things simple, I will leave this feature disabled. Don't worry, you can always change this later. When you are ready, click the Next button. The next screen is the Default Stores page. This screen allows you to choose where Windows will store the files needed to make Hyper-V work. By default, Windows will store the configuration files for your virtual machines in the C Program Data Microsoft Windows Hyper-V directory. Also note that Windows will store the virtual hard disks used by your virtual machines in the C Users Public Documents Hyper-V Virtual Hard Disks directory. Don't worry if you are unsure what these are right now. I will cover virtual hard disks and configuration files in more detail in later lessons. For now, I will leave these on the default locations and will just click the Next button. On the Confirm Installation Selections page at the top, tick the Restart the Destination Server Automatically If Required checkbox and then click the Yes button. On some occasions, 
A reboot of the server is necessary in order to complete the installation of certain roles or features. By ticking this tick box, the server will reboot itself automatically if required, so that you do not have to do it manually. This is a matter of preference, but generally is something that I like to do. When you are ready to install Hyper-V, click the Install button. The Hyper-V role will start to install. At the top of the screen, a progress bar will show how far along the installation process is. It can take a number of minutes for the role to fully install. Server Manager will prompt you once the installation is complete. I can tell you that, in total, it took two reboots of my server to install the Hyper-V role completely. If I return to Server Manager, you will now see that the Hyper-V role is appearing in the list of installed roles on the left-hand side. As you can see, Using Server Manager to install Hyper-V is relatively straightforward, but you can also install the role using Windows PowerShell. I will now uninstall the Hyper-V role from this server so that I can demonstrate how to install the role using Windows PowerShell. The Hyper-V role has now been removed from this server. If I open Server Manager, Notice that the Hyper-V role has disappeared from the list of installed roles on the left-hand side. I will now close Server Manager and open Windows PowerShell to demonstrate how to install the role. First, I will issue the Install Windows Feature commandlet. Next, I will add the Name switch, followed by the name of the role I'd like to install which in this case is Hyper-V. Next, I need to specify which computer I'd like to install the role onto. To do this, I will enter the Computer Name switch, and will enter the name of this server, which is Hyper-1. Next, I will add the Include Management Tools switch. This will ensure that all of the Hyper-V management tools, such as Hyper-V Manager, are installed along with the role. Lastly, I will add the Restart switch. This will reboot the server automatically if required. When you are ready to install the role, press the Enter button. Windows PowerShell will start to install the Hyper-V role. This can take a number of minutes to complete. Notice at the top of the screen, you will see a progress bar showing how far along the process is. Once again, it took two reboots of my server to install the role completely. If I once again open Server Manager, you will see that the Hyper-V role is once again appearing in the list of roles on the left-hand side. This concludes this lesson on how to install the Hyper-V role. I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson and found it informative. In the next lesson, I will show you how to create your first virtual machine. If you'd like to see more Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 training videos, please feel free to browse our YouTube channel. And don't forget to leave your comments and show your support for our videos by subscribing to our channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next lesson.